Welcome back everybody, my name is Gamma Trap, one word, and this is a second video where we talk about how to color skin, the many different ways to color skin. Uh, the first video was about how to shade skin, the values of skin, a very important video. So if you don't already have your own way of shading skin and how to handle the values of skin, then I would suggest to watch that video because this one's all about how to just add the color to make it as skin-like as possible, the various different colors and pigments and ways of natural or even crazy skin. I separated them into two different videos because some people already have their own way of kind of drawing skin but they don't know how to color it or vice versa so because this is a coloring video we're literally just going to be throwing color on this individual this subject that I drew it's, it's still kind of rough around the edges but I just wanted to make sure the skin looked okay and the first video by the way talks about how to make that how to do this with skin this video is again just all about coloring so when thinking about coloring say a human all of us humans uh, usually have blood if you're alive <laughs> and that's actually something to keep in mind if you're drawing like say for example a zombie or something but if, if we have blood, that means the blood is going to show through in various ways through our skin. Our skin is not a completely opaque thing for almost any of us. For some people, it's it's super thick and like, you know, the, the, the pigment's very thick and you can't see any blood, no matter how much light or whatever you shine through it. But for the vast majority of us, you could see at least a little bit of blood depending on the light. So the first layer you want to put down is, is a, a very reddish pink layer, depending on, again, the lightness, the darkness, the pigment and, and how thick the skin is and all that fun stuff. And I'm just gonna walk you through the basic steps of what we're gonna talk about. The next, you're gonna wanna put the pigment in. This one's more for a, just a more lighter skinned individual. But you'll notice also, yeah, in the darkest parts here, it's still kind of like pure black and that's not actually what you want. So there is another layer possibility that you can change around depending on you know, your tastes of uh, adding a sort of red lighten layer. But these three layers are how we're going to color the skin. So first we're going to start with the quote blood layer. So let's erase the ones I got right now. So we're going to start with our black and white person, our, our lovely value individual with it with just shading. And we're going to get our color and we're going to go to the kind of reddish orange, mostly red. And we're just going to come up here to this sort of like faded pink. Now all this is experimentation. All this is going to be determined on how you like to do this. But the first layer is going to be a blood layer. So we're going to get this sort of pink right here and we're going to set the layer to overlay. And this is just a clipping mask I have set to this black and white figure here. And then with a nice soft brush, we're going to find the areas that would show the most blood. And when I say that, there's the skin and then there's the muscle underneath and there's the bone where the skin is very thin. You'll see a lot of blood there. Usually the way I like to think of it is if the skin indents for any reason, like if it goes into like this armpit area or for example, the nose is very good because this, you know, it's very close to the cartilage of the nose or the cheeks usually get pretty flush because there's a lot of blood in the cheeks or the chin, you know, that kind of stuff or the elbows, elbows are big or the fingertips. There's a lot of places where blood is pretty common. There's also different areas of the chest and the abdomen and the legs and the head. The way I like to think of it though is anywhere the skin sort of indents, right around there is usually where you're gonna have the most amount of blood quote unquote showing. So try to keep that in mind while you're drawing this. But because this is an overlay layer, you might find that if you drew with black and white with like a, a heart with hard lines or and you, like, you might be fighting the, the really dark spots. And we'll, we'll talk about how to sort of combat that pretty soon. But we're just gonna add the blood and you could add, you know, <laughs> everywhere if you want, but this is sort of gonna be a little experimentation for your on your part. You're gonna find out the best way you like to add this blood area. And there's gonna be a lot of blood in the neck. And this might be a little too pale for, you know, blood. We might actually make this more red if we need to, but at the moment we're keeping it pretty kind of pale pink because this adds up to the other layer. So we don't have to make it go too crazy. Now the layer on top of that is gonna be another overlay layer. And this one is gonna be the pigment. So the way typical human pigment is, there's not actually that much variation. We pretty much stay within this range, almost all of us. But get to, get to a point where it's kind of kind of orange at the farthest saturation. We're not obviously gonna make it oh, completely orange and we're not gonna make it completely white. But we're gonna find like a tan right around this line right here, this diagonal line. The darker, the more saturated and the lighter, the less saturated. So if you find a spot, just, just any good spot around this sort of diagonal line here, pick any spots you'd like to, to play around with and then just sort of coat that all over your subject. And we'll play around with this enough to be able to see the best combination. And now we get to play around with the opacity of this character. And this is where the real magic happens. So we're gonna go to the blood layer underneath this layer. If we turn that off, we'll see this guy looks really dead. 
And that is actually the the pitfall that a lot of new uh, artists tend to fall into because they only try to do it with like maybe one layer or they paint with just one color, maybe not even overlay, but they actually just grab the color and they just paint with it. They'll notice that like, man, <laughs> this, this doesn't look like any kind of skin. This person doesn't like look quite right. I'm missing that little something. And that something is usually the blood layer underneath. So if we add it, see how, <laughs> see what I'm saying? This guy looks like a lobster. Okay, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna lower the opacity. And we can lower it to 50, 45, 75. And you're gonna find this little sweet spot for you. Again, this is all very personal. You're gonna make your own decisions. And usually, we'll, we'll talk about this pretty soon, but the darker the pigment, usually the less blood shows. And you'll drop the past even more. But let's say, because this person has much lighter skin, you could see more blood because it's less pigmentation in the skin. So that person looks pretty good, not too shabby. Now, as I mentioned, these, uh, these dark spots, in like the, the edge of the neck, uh, the armpits, uh, depending on how well defined the person is, if there's like a lot of deep crevices and deep shadows and, and like deep cut grooves, uh, you'll find that you might be fighting uh, the really dark spots a lot and it looks too, it doesn't quite look like it's it's a person, you know? It looks too flat, it looks too muddy. There's, there's a million different ways to talk about it, but this one, it's not gonna be an overlay layer. It can be, but you're gonna be fighting it a bit extra. What we're gonna be doing, because it's a very dark spot, we're just gonna lighten it up a little bit and give it a color at the same time. The best way to do that, again, this layer is underneath our blood layer. So we've got our blood layer, our pigment layer. So beneath both of these, right above our subject, this is gonna be our lighten layer. And for this, we're just gonna to go to red. I'm gonna get a nice deep crimson because we don't wanna lighten up too much. We still want it to be dark. It's still a shadow area. We don't wanna mess with it too, too much. But we're gonna get a nice deep, deep crimson. And we're gonna gently kind of paint in those shadowy areas. And this is gonna lighten it up a little bit. And you're gonna to have to play with this a lot to find out. So for example, if we just go full crazy and just push the brush down as hard as you can, you'll notice it flattens out that area a lot and you don't get, and you lose the shadowy value that you're really gonna go for. So you're gonna have to play around and depending on how hard you press the brush, you're gonna find just the perfect spot, the nice little sweet spot. A lot of this is experimentation. I'm just giving you the uh, the tools to help you with that experimentation. We're gonna come up to you know, the dark spots that maybe have, maybe have too much shadow. If they're too gray, if they're too low saturation, they don't look like a person. Just 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 gently put a little bit of, put a little bit of blood in there. You have to experiment with that a bit on your own. But this is a more uh, light-skinned individual. Now, I did prepare this black and white subject with a very light rim lighting, depending on how you know where the light source is coming from. I have a couple light sources on this person. One of them is coming from behind and above him, which causes this rim lighting. So we're gonna add a bit of sun or you know whatever color you really want. Now that one is going to be, it's gonna be warm. So it's in this little region like we've been using. I'm just gonna go to this sort of like very light yellowish orange. And I'm gonna come up here to this like really, really nice little like butter yellow up here. I'm trying to find a good, good spot right there. I'm gonna drop the brush down a bit. And this is another overlay layer. And all you have to do is just, just really, really gently with a nice soft brush, just kind of paint that in those areas. And a little bit of butter yellow on the overlay. If the values are already in place for you to do this, really already helps sell the, uh, the sunlight thing. Because what's great is if you add more warmth to it, so if you make it more orange, for example, the sunlight will react more to the red and orange that's already on the subject, which is which is much more realistic than you'd expect. Because so you see here, it's uh, got nice, really light, bright. The sunlight's hitting it, and then there's a skin. But then there's this sort of orange, this sort of like orange right between the sunlight and the skin. That's a very realistic reaction because the sunlight will hit the skin and you'll be able to see the, the blood underneath it just at the edge of the sunlight. So for example, if you've got a light behind someone's ears, usually you'll be able to see through it and it looks kind of like pink. Or if if they if like a, a child and you put like a flashlight by their hand, you can see sort of like the, the blood between the webbings of their fingers, just stuff like that. Or, you know, just, just weird stuff because, you know, like a child's got very thin skin. So now we've got this sort of system in place. We've figured out pretty much how to make this pigmentation of skin, but let's do a darker pigmentation. So let's go for our nice orange. Again, we want that very saturated one to be just as orange as you can make it pretty much. It's not too red, not too yellow, nice between. You got this lovely little diagonal line of ours. We're gonna come down here. It's actually made a little more red. There we go, that's a good orange. Nice little diagonal line. We're gonna come down to a darker spot in the diagonal line. And where that darker spot's gonna be is gonna be completely up to you. But this is pretty much your, your go-to line for human skin. <laughs> so let's get nice dark pigmentation or a darker pigmentation, I should say. We're gonna add that in. And you can see, because it's already sort of reacting to everything else that we've already put there, 
we got the blood layer underneath and it's really reacting to that so you can see like giant red splotches now this looks okay but it's not quite normal like because usually people with darker pigmentation don't you don't see this the blood underneath them as much so we're going to take our blood layer and we're just going to lower the opacity a bit and that looks slightly more realistic and again you're gonna have to find your own little little sweet spot so if we do, if we ramp the blood layer up so you can see what i'm saying this person looks like they have a serious issue <laughs> that they need to go take care of so we're gonna find that little sweet spot but just this is pretty much the secret sauce that's all it is you got the you got the blood layer and then you got the pigment layer and then you can if you need to You've got the light and layer with a little bit of extra red in it. Now you can also mess with this underneath these other layers, but you have now full power to, to handle pretty much any natural pigmentation of somebody's skin. Now this of course is how to, how to color the skin of like a regular person, but you can take this information and use it in strange ways. With this information, let's take our pigment layer and let's make it weird. Let's make it a strange color. This will work in any situation, but because we have our values done again, if you if you want to learn how to draw the black and white values of the skin that is in the previous video, but we're getting kind of in Hulk territory now, <laughs> right? So yeah, like and you can just experiment with how much and what color blood for that matter, if it's an alien, you know, how much blood underneath the skin there is. But because this is how skin works, skin is just a sort of a, a an envelope, sort of like a wrapping to cover up our internal organs and our blood and stuff like that. So depending on the color of the blood, depending on the color of our internal organs, depending on what species you're drawing, and usually we're drawing people, but you never know. I mean, this could be a Hulk, this could be a crazy dead sea monster person, who knows? This is a very strange color. I don't know why I picked this, but you know, this is just how basic sort of skin works on a humanoid. You could say we, you know, every pretty much animal has blood in it, right? So if, if you got blood and if you got skin, you can make some strange combinations. So depending on the pigment of the skin is a particular color and just keep in mind the pigment and the blood underneath it and how it all reacts to light. So get the values right. And then you can handle the color in any strange way you want using just the two, the overlay layers and the light and layer. If you think there's too much uh, darkness in an area where you're fighting the, the black and the white a little too much. So I hope that was useful. Hope it was fun. Hope it was entertaining. Like if you like it, a dislike if you dislike it, subscribe to see more. I do a lot of art tutorials. You can check out the channel and you'll see just this huge list of art tutorials. Also, if you'd like to see the values of how to draw skin of different types, soft skin, hard chiseled skin, that's in the description down below. Thank you so much to my amazing patrons. I appreciate the ever loving of you for supporting the ever loving out of me and I will see you in the next video. Take care.